The Indo-Pacific Visions vodcast is an official product of the Journal of Indo-Pacific Affairs. The program fosters intellectual, international discourse on a wide array of topics associated with the Indo-Pacific region, including international relations, foreign policy, national security, allies and partners, geoeconomics, military history, and more. It envisions an inclusive Indo-Pacific that spans from the west coasts of the Americas to the eastern shores of Africa and from Antarctica to the Arctic and covering much of Asia and all of Oceania. Disclaimer. The views and opinions expressed or implied in this vodcast are those of the authors and should not be construed as carrying the official sanction of the Department of Defense, Department of the Air Force, Air Education and Training Command, Air University, or other agencies or departments of the U.S. government or their international equivalents. This is the Indo-Pacific Visions vodcast. Hi, welcome everyone to the vodcast series by the Journal of Indo-Pacific Affairs. Today, we have the pleasure to interact with Hyunji Rim, and she will share her views on South Korea and its role in the Indo-Pacific. Hyunji Rim received her PhD from the John Hopkins University. Her PhD dissertation was on deterring allies, curbing the emergence of nuclear outlaws in East Asia. Her expertise is in strategic competition, Indo-Pacific strategy, U.S. Alliance politics, and East Asian security dynamics, as well as the U.S. foreign policy in the East Asian region. Her papers are published in the Pacific Review, Journal of Indo-Pacific Affairs, and International Journal of Korean Unification Studies. So uh, today, we are, have the pleasure to uh, invite you, Hyunji. And we would like to hear your views on South Korea and the Indo-Pacific. And you're welcome to introduce yourself. Thank you, Vandana. And thank you, uh, Jipa, for the wonderful opportunity. Um, as Vandana just mentioned, um, my research interest covers USRK alliance and uh, Indo-Pacific strategy and um, East Asian security dynamics and US foreign policy. Um, today, I would like to talk about new uh, UN administration in South Korea and uh, its new uh, Indo-Pacific vision. So um, the new uh, president-elect, Yoon sang uh, he will have his inauguration um, early May, May 10th, uh, won the 20th presidential election in March. And building up to the, the, the day of the election, it was a, it went, he went through, the both of the candidates went through a muddy struggle. And um, I say muddy struggle because the People's Party, uh, People's Power Party, Kungminedang, and Taburo Minjudang, Democratic Party of Korea, they were really going at each other, um, uncovering all the dirt um, about the candidates. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, Yoon came out as a winner and uh, with a record high voting rate of 70 plus, uh, uh, voting rate of 70%. And also um, what is interesting is the, he won by less than 1% uh, percentage point, which means um, there will be a lot of challenges for Yoon uh, to embrace both parties, different ideas and different views uh, across different issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know, we've heard him speak about, you know, ditching strategic ambiguity. So how his, is his, you know, foreign policy plan different from the previous administration? Um, there's a foreign policy piece that he did as a uh, candidate um, titled South Korea needs to step up. Uh, in that article, he talks about uh, this strategic ambiguity of how, um, and I quote, South Korea has failed to adapt to the growing strategic competition between the US and China, maintaining an approach of strategic ambiguity without stating a principled position. Um, this has raised uh, both domestic and international concerns that Seoul may be tilting towards Beijing and that the USRK alliance, which is the linchpin of um, the stability and peace in the theater has uh, been loosening. 
And Yoon thus, uh, from the very beginning, has been actively voicing out the importance of the strengthening of US-RK alliance and hopes to use the strengthened alliance to expand South Korea's role with more responsible attitude in international society. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, you know, um, as you mentioned that he's, you know, taking over power on 10th May, and soon thereafter, the US president is also visiting. Um, president mm -hmm. Biden is uh, due to visit Japan and South mm -hmm. Korea. So how do you see, you know, that right at the beginning of taking power, taking over power, and then uh, interacting with the US president, how, mm -hmm. you know, this uh, leading to the US-RK relations? Um, as he stated uh, from the beginning, he's on the course of strengthening US-RK alliance. And you can tell that um, from the media, uh, domestic media coverage that um, they're welcoming it and um, actually they're very uh, excited for it, saying that one, um, it's taking pretty early on, it's taking within two weeks uh, after his inauguration, um, which compared to past administration, this is, um, pretty uh, in, uh, exciting and shocking. Um, I remember Moon and Trump uh, a, a summit took place after somewhat 50 plus days after Moon's uh, inauguration and Park Obama similar, um, I think longer 70 plus days and uh, Lee Myung Bak and George W. Bush uh, 54 days. So this is the record speed and mm -hmm. um, uh, they're excited for it. And also the fact that um, how Biden, President Biden is uh, coming to South Korea, Seoul before going to Tokyo, I yeah. think it is sending um, the right message from the United States to the South Korean domestic list, uh, public that Biden uh, administration is too willing to commit to um, USRK alliance and strengthening and deepening the relations. Mm -hmm. And do you see uh, that the U.S. would be interested in pulling South Korea into the Indo-Pacific, um, as there have been talks for, uh, you know, Quad Plus? Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you think that U.S. is trying to build a position for South Korea as well? I think it's known that um, during Moon administration, um, the United States wanted to talk to South Korea about joining the Quad. But um, I think it was Victor Cha who came out and said, South Korea's position was, please don't bring that issue to the table. Um, mm -hmm. So let's keep it out of uh, the negotiation table uh, and let's not really openly talk about it. Uh, but the difference is, um, I think US interest in having South Korea's uh, support in Quad and Quad or Quad Plus or in its Indo-Pacific strategy is still there. Uh, but the difference is, Yoon is now ready to commit to Quad. He actually openly said uh, in his interview with uh, the, uh, I think Washington Post in April, that uh, Yoon sees um, South Korea joining the Quad. Uh, Yoon wants the uh, Quad uh, for South Korea. But then mm -hmm. he also uh, mentions that um, uh, for now, um, Quad, it's not really, joining Quad is not really up to South Korea. It's up to the Quad members right. and how they decide on, uh, on the process. Um, in my personal opinion, joining the Quad or the Quad Plus, um, some form of Quad Plus institution, um, it's actually a secondary issue. And in my opinion, as long as Korean um, commitment to the Quad Quad or Quad Plus Indo-Pacific cooperation is there. And as long as Korea openly um, advertise it, I th think there shouldn't be a problem. And it mm -hmm. should be welcomed by the United States as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right that so far, you know, the Quad countries are not, uh, you know, that welcoming that, you know, there should be an extension, there should be any other member added to the group. But yes, there are possibilities of the Quad Plus and, um, it was, uh, you know, it's been going on for a long time since mm -hmm. 2013. Yeah. Okay. And um, and this is, you know, uh, this is important because, you know, this development, this visit by President Biden is important because then 
uh, the quad meeting is also upcoming in Tokyo, which will be held in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, so lots to watch out for. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how do you see, um, what are the concerns for you, uh, you know, um, about joining Indo-Pacific or Quad Plus? What would be his, you know, um, any obstacles that you see that if South Korea openly and proactively engages in the plan, which, um, you know, like um, the Quad countries are coming up with and as Biden is also in, insisting that free and open Indo-Pacific. So do you see any hindrances there, especially vis-a-vis China? Um, mm-hmm. So um, when uh, Yoon came out and said, we need like a, like a clear goal, a uh, clear fundamental strategy for South Korea. And first thing we should do is ditch the strategic ambiguity. Um, But this does not, of course, um, it could arc China or North Korea, um, which poses threat to South Korea in different ways, uh, can arc them and it may arc them. Um, So those two countries, uh, dealing with those two countries could be a little challenging. But um, committing to the quad or quad plus cooperation for South Korea, um, it doesn't, and doing away, moving away from strategic ambiguity, it doesn't mean that you have to pick China or the United States. Of course, uh, uh, for many countries in the world and other US allies, China is a big trade partner and so is China for Korea. Mm-hmm. And um, there is uh, certainly the economic in- interdependencies there. Mm-hmm. And um, even with um, quad cooperation, this uh, economic relations can continue. Um, so um, I guess it's not a matter of A or B. It's more of how you deal with uh, these networks and how you maneuver through these different different issue areas uh, in uh, issue areas. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it will uh, depend on how they handle it diplomatically, right? Right. Uh, I mean, politically the- and constitutionally, um, uh, South Korea pursues democracy, mm-hmm. and this value is not really upheld by China. Mm-hmm. So in the political realm, South Korea's interest more lies more with the United States and China. And even though you promote economic friendship or relationship with China, you can also at the same time pursue the same uh, strategic value with the United States and it shouldn't be a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, how would you see this as, you know, with regard to North Korea? what would be its implications, its active pursuit of Indo-Pacific strategy? And uh, how will this, you know, uh, be regarding North Korea? How do you see, how do you see Yoon resolving the, you know, the relationships with North Korea? Mm. Um, So um, the Yoon, I think, was used to be a public prosecutor before becoming uh, entering the pol- entering politics, and his legal background and belief is in law and justice, and this is actually reflected in his uh, vision towards uh, North Korea. Uh, returning to fundamentals, he clarifies that North Korea is still the main enemy of Seoul by South Korean constitution, and have openly argued that. Uh, or argued for North Korean denuclearization. So his approach to North Korean denuclearization um, uh, with a, he approached his approach uh, with a clear roadmap that shows variable and irreversible steps along with his call for um, strengthened alliance and deterrence. Um, I think it's, it's it's a step towards right direction. Um, however, North Korea seemed to think that uh, 
Yoon is a could be a hard nosed hardliner. But uh, if you read what he wrote in Foreign Post, uh, Foreign Affairs, or, or the interview with the Washington Post, he actually um, is not. He supports. He's in support of humanitarian aid at any time, and he uh, actually is willing to. Uh, commit to uh, working with North Korea and provide uh, economic incentives as North Korea uh, goes through um, these processes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting to know. And uh, South Korea recently tested the SLBMs and has in, been investing in uh, military capabilities, advancing its military capabilities and emerging as a um, uh, you know, as a supplier in the region, um, it's increasing military modernization, both in the quantitative and qualitative terms. Do you think it can lead to a arms race in, on the Korean uh, Peninsula, or and or uh, you think that you know this is the way uh, for North, uh, for South Korea to move forward, proceed forward, and establish itself as a um, as a recognized power in the region? Um, as many states seek to uh, strengthen their position in the new great power game uh, strategic competition, uh, and they are investing in uh, military modernization or upgrading military capabilities uh, supported by all these new technologies, and I should say emerging technologies. Um, some of them are not new. Um, <laughs> so South Korea too recently invested in um, some of these technologies, uh, including uh, a manned airborne intelligence surveillance targeting and reconnaissance uh, ISTAR and offensive uh, drones, uh, unmanned aerial, aerial vehicles and their navigation technology and so on. And these uh, updates and modernization is one to counter, um, to improve its own ISR capability and counter any provocations by uh, the North Korea, as well as uh, somewhat gain that uh, preemptive advantage over any potential uh, provocations. But at the same time, beyond um, North Korea, uh, these, the, these uh, modernization and pursuit of emerging technologies is somewhat beyond, um, it's not just confined to issues related to North Korea. Mm -hmm. It actually goes beyond uh, the South Korean peninsula. And I guess, as I argue in my uh, with the recent Chipa article, um, for Seoul, the strategic motives behind uh, pursuing these emerging technologies and the, their military application are in um, three folds. One is to strengthen USRK alliance and bring up that interoperability. Uh, and two, nurturing South Korean defense industry, which is really blooming these days and bolster um, the related exports. And three, based on one and two, uh, expand its middle power status in Southeast Asia uh, which has been um, relatively uh, neglected um, or the field that South Korea has been trying to uh, uh, put more effort into uh, fruit and in more um, outcomes. Mm -hmm. okay. And these motivations all vision um, Seoul to play that expanded role in Indo-Pacific. Um, mm -hmm. So the important thing is that you have to make sure what you're doing and what you're willing to do and so much show and tell North Korea that these all these capabilities, it's not just to threaten North Korea. It's, it's in South Korea's own um, strategic interest. And um, I think that Yoon is, one of the things that Yoon is interested in and doing is that moving away from that abnormal concentration on North Korea policy, which Moon had. Um, in my opinion, Moon administration from the very beginning was uh, interested in, in improving, advancing inter-Korea relations and dead mm -hmm. set on uh, achieving these, this peace declaration. Um, but uh, 
in pursuit of those two goals, I think Moon administration has sacrificed uh, Korea's Seoul's diplomatic and foreign policy um, agenda uh, and its potential to play a bigger role in the international community outside um, the Korean Peninsula. And Yoon is trying to restore that uh, by starting with uh, USRK alliance. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, interesting, interesting. So uh, any final remarks or any suggestions you have or uh, regarding what should be, according to you, what should be the approach of South Korea vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, its Indo-Pacific strategy? Um, do you think that it can get involved only if there is another organization set up like Quad Plus or do you still envision that South Korea can still play a role um, my, uh, I guess, answer is yes and yes and yes. <laughs> um, in my opinion, um, South Korea can and will play a bigger role with this government in the Pacific um, uh, community, regardless of its form. It could be quad joining quad, it could be uh, with the quad plus countries, or it could be just outside quad as a US strong US ally just supporting what they're doing. But like I mentioned in the beginning of the interview, as long as South Korean will is there, and um, the acceptance um, from the other countries and uh, interested countries is there, I think um, this shouldn't be a problem. And in the long run, maybe South Korea can um, seriously uh, consider if joining the Quad actually will help uh, South Korea promote its own strategic goals. Or actually, maybe um, for certain issues, it would actually help South Korea to um, stay outside Quad, just like the United Kingdom, and still play a big role. So I don't think the problem is the membership. It's, it's mm -hmm. the political will and commitment. Um, and I guess, ironically, in my opinion, the biggest challenge for in the short run for UN administration will come from the domestic uh, po political arena. Uh, since the muddy struggle, um, I think really North Korea issue, Korea-Japan relations, which is another area that Yoon is focusing on, and USRK alliance. Um, these are all very highly volatile issues and are often consumed by uh, domestic politics and its populistic goals. So I think actually the short run, the, the biggest challenge is that how you deals with different uh, views from different mm -hmm. parties and how he can uh, embrace them. It's really up to his cap uh, capacity and his advisors, um, you know, roles in uh, ameliorating the polit political uh, playing field in, in, in domestic uh, uh, politics. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Um, you know, so we, um, Interacting with you, we have come to know several points about, you know, the new administration, which is going to take, you know, take over in May, early May, and it is coinciding with the President Biden's visit as well. So we see a strengthening of the US RK relations, as well as you've also spoken about that um, China, uh, Yoon will not be, you know, um, is going to go beyond the strategic ambiguity and is going to maintain a balance with the relationship with China and um, also try to balance its relations with North Korea and be forthcoming for the humanitarian aid as and when it is required. And also, as you have mentioned about the, their emphasis on um, strengthening the defense industry, not particularly uh, particularly in an offensive way, but, you know, because to become a, a rising middle power, establish itself as a middle power, a recognized power in the, uh, the Indo-Pacific region. So these are really interesting points that you have, you know, highlighted. And uh, anything else you would like to add beyond this? Anything you, anything you would want to add as your conclusions, concluding remarks? Um, well, 
Um, in terms of foreign policy and diplomacy, um, I think one of the challenging part for the new administration would be um, because of its importance and urgence uh, to recommit to cohesive strategic front of the US ROK alliance and figuring out how to strategically maneuver um, through these uh, different issues with China while strengthening the alliance. Mm -hmm. And a second thing would be, um, I think it will be taking some policy emphasis away from the North Korea or inner Korea relations without triggering uh, damaging responses from Pyongyang or sending um, a wrong message even. Right. Um, this is why um, I think deterrent capabilities needs to be strengthened to signal North Korea that uh, its provocations will not lead to consequence. Uh, it will lead to consequences and will not promise Kim uh, his end game. Mm -hmm. And I think Seoul is uh, right to uh, build up and strengthen its deterrence capabilities and commit to building, um, you know, three Ks. Uh, people talk about this a lot these days, kill chain, Korea air missile defense, and Korea massive punishment and retaliation supported by these emerging technologies uh, mentioned earlier. And all this should be um, formulated, uh, built on a clear strategic goal that Korea has been uh, missing. Um, a clear strategic vision for South Korea in Indo-Pacific uh, that can be a guideline that helps Seoul to maximize its foreign policy and diplomacy, mm -hmm. diplomatic capabilities in international arena. And it should be um, able to transcend the domestic discussions and uh, populistic arguments, uh, mm -hmm. one that could go on for a long time. So a, a strategic vision, um, I think that will be one of the most important uh, homework for the UN administration. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, yes, that's a good, uh, you know, conclusion to our discussion today that you are saying clear strategic vision and uh, rise to the occasion because the opportunity is now. And so thank you so much, Hyunji for sharing your views, your perspective on uh, South Korea and its role in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, really appreciate that you took out time and you, um, uh, you came here for uh, sharing your views and uh, giving us these, um, these points, this insight, sharing your insight on this issue. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, thank time. you. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. And I really enjoyed the, uh, the whole process. Thank you. Thank you.